There we go. The McLaren Arturo is just whistling its way out of the parking lot right now because I'm in all electric mode. I'm trying to get hit with guy with trailer. That would be a bad way to start this review of a $300,000 car. Sorry, $289,000. It's a bargain. Key things to know are over here on the right side, this rocker switch controls down here. You see if I rock up to comfort or sport, there we go, that starts the engine. Ooh, this is dangerous. That's really exciting. I'm thrilled to see you do that. It's really wonderful. Over here, I can go up to sport, which I will do. Now if I, over here is manual, so that's the manual setting to make the transmission listen to only me. So this is a full plug-in hybrid vehicle from McLaren. It is their first like that. I know the P1, okay, that's a hyper car. That's not really a mass-produced car. And this is much more than the P1 in that regard. Also goes further than the P1. This can do, McLaren says as much as 18 miles on electric. Seems like most people get about 12 or so. All told, if you put it into uh, the sport and track and comfort settings, you can do that in any of the engine settings. But if you go over here, the Sport and Track are running the engine all the time, which is now a smaller engine. It's not a V8 anymore. It's a 3-liter twin-turbo V6. It also has that hybrid motor stored in the transmission, so that works that way as well. I so want to pass you, but I'm going to be nice. All told, we're talking about 671 horsepower and 531 pound-feet of torque, which you can look at one of two ways. You can go, where's the comma? Why isn't it over a thousand of each number? Because you've gotten warped by electric cars or hypercars. Or you can think about the fact that that is wickedly fast in this vehicle, as I will demonstrate in a moment. One of the most amazing things about this car is how easy that kind of speed actually feels. It's surprisingly straightforward to drive this car very quickly. In spite of how much it costs, in spite of everything it's doing behind the scenes. I mean, this is a mostly a full rethink by, by McLaren. They have gone to an all new electrical system that's now ethernet based. They started from ground zero. That's very, very hard to do. carbon tub. In fact, this is the first restart since the MP412C. All the McLarens you've seen prior to that have been built on the MP412C architecture and a lot of the infrastructure that they built for that car. This is a rethink. Notice when I pull a paddle, the left one moves with the right one or vice versa. You can theoretically shift from either side because you can pull a for, uh, paddle forward or back and make the other one rock and do what you need. It's actually hard to describe to you how easy this car is to drive quickly. One of the things that's helpful is the hydraulic steering feel. This has a hydraulic steering assist, which is really wonderful. 
McLaren calls it electrohydraulic because the pump for this power steering fluid is actually electric, so it's not driven off the engine, but the assist and the feel itself is hydraulic, which is a fascinating kind of combination, best of both worlds scenario. That's partial throttle. One of the weird things about this car is the brakes. Now it has carbon ceramics on it, so that's contributing somewhat. I'm not a huge carbon ceramic fan, but the surprise here is the fact that you've actually got to get on the brakes pretty hard to get them to do anything you're expecting them to do. The thing to notice here is just the fact that the car doesn't care. It's just, this speed doesn't matter. I could hang on to this all day. The sensation here is as if the car has aero. It just has a very flat, very stable feel about it in high speed corners or corners with any speed. It feels like it's being pushed down into the earth in the way that a car with aero feels like. But there's no big fin popping up in the back. I mean, this is a very straightforward shape. of rubber. Glad I didn't hit any of that. This car does have nose lift. In fact, it's got a pretty aggressive nose lift, which is very nice. So that simplifies on all of your kind of usage realities. Because it'll go all electric, that means the engine can go silent. So if you live in an urban area or you don't want to frustrate your neighbors, you can kind of lurk places with it just making the whistling noise. On prior McLarens, they did something that was a, it's like a hydro pneumatic, I think they called it. It was a suspension where all the pieces were linked and it had like central reservoirs. And so there weren't any traditional suspension set up in the early McLarens. They didn't have uh, sway bars or normal struts and springs. This has gone back to a normal strut, spring and sway bar reality that you would find on other cars. And according to McLaren, they're getting even more grip out of the rear of the car than they had on the 20, pardon me, on the 720S, which is profound that they're getting more grip with a more traditional suspension setup. But that's something that McLaren is discussing as they've walked away from that kind of elaborate and very cool looking suspension that they had prior. I remember the feel of that on the 12C was actually pretty great. This uh, doesn't feel bad by any means, but this adjustable suspension is uh, much more traditional. You may notice while I'm driving, I'm actually charging the battery here as well. Uh, the, the This is a McLaren press loaner and it's been discussed a lot that it rarely gets plugged in. There is a plug that was provided in the, in the trunk, but because people are driving it in sport mode or track mode, it's almost always charging the battery, so it rarely ever gets plugged in. There is no back hatch at all. In fact, there's almost no access to the back. You just have a trunk, and that takes a couple of big-sized uh, overhead cases. It's hard to describe how easy this is. I'm showing you the big number because it's, uh, it's really easy. This car somehow pulls off being undramatic at high speed, but still being involving, and that is quite an interesting trick because many cars that are really, really quick, they feel like they don't need you. There's, there's nothing about them that kind of draws you in and feels involving. That's a real problem when a car gets as heavy and technologically filled as this is. This is a 3,400 pound car, which, uh, look, I will say from my own bias, is too heavy for a sports car. That it shouldn't weigh that much. But this has got plenty of power, instant power because of that electric motor assist. And it just makes it easy without making it distant. That is very, very rare and very difficult. I actually can go down into electric mode. Yep, there you go. Electric and comfort. The 
there's a little bit of a whir, and then there's just the sound of the tires and the wind. Look at the visibility. That's another thing you can't overstate in this car. I don't know that I've been in very many cars where the visibility was as good as it is in the McLaren Artura. I have no blind spots. If I look over my shoulder, I just see what's over my shoulder. I just, I, it's hard to describe. Uh, I hope you can see it well enough because it really is one of the best bubble canopies ever. And here it is on this low slung sports car. You can't hide with this car. You get noticed even in this subtle color, though it's a very nice green. Okay, let's go back to engine. There's sport. So I can upshift or downshift on either paddle. See? Interesting. Try not to hit the skunk carcass. McLaren would appreciate that. So yeah, down on the left, watch. Or up with the left. Interesting. I don't know of anybody else doing that. I do like, like that rocker feel. That's something McLaren's done for a while, and it's a really nice feel. And also, it, it actually, the actual tactile reality of these paddles is very nice. You'll notice they're attached to the wheel, but the, the actual click, I know this is ridiculous, but the actual click of the paddle is satisfying. I'm a guy that normally when you have a dual clutch transmission, I end up finding myself just driving it in auto a lot and not in manual very much because so many of them are so good and I just, I'm not getting the enjoyment of manual so I don't worry about it. This one I have used in manual quite a bit, even though if I turn it off of that, it'll run up to eighth gear. It, uh, it does a good job. It does a very good job. It changes its personality based on what you have it set on here, track, sport, comfort, or of course electric. Zero to 60 here is two and a half seconds, all right? It does the quarter mile in about 10 seconds. I bring up those stats because I need you to understand how really wickedly fast this is, and yet at the same time, comfortable, usable, easy visibility. I mean, $300,000 is an absurd amount of money, but I, I'm struggling to find anything in this car where I look at it and I don't think, oh, I see how things are adding up. You've got brand new everything, You've got hybrid, you've got a lot of power, usability, great visibility, comfortable seats, all the tech that you need. You start to go, okay, I see where $300,000 went. I won't be buying one because I cannot afford it, and you may be watching this and can't either, but if we could, we probably should. I'm excited to see what McLaren's product portfolio does from here because this is a fantastic restart. Early McLarens were plagued with software issues. They've had to deal with a whole other new round of software issues on this all new technology. So they obviously will be bugs continuing to be worked out. Though my understanding is that the earlier Arturas than this one, this is latest and greatest, were more prone to issues. They've gotten to a much more stable software pack now that few people are having trouble with. We did have it lose its mind one time while we had it over the course of the last few days. We locked it up, we walked away, we came back, and it was happy again. Well, it's about to get boring, so I will let you go. But thank you for joining me on this POV of the McLaren Artura. And I, I genuinely hope that if you're watching this, you get a chance to be in one because they are absolutely special. And I would love to have one. It feels like a grown-up Lotus product. But, uh, yeah, $300,000 is a bit prohibitive at this point. We shall see. Okay. I'll let you stick around. Go back to electric mode. We'll just tootle along behind the maintenance truck.
see it telling me power, boost, charge. I've got eight miles available right now. It's only a 7.1 kilowatt battery. And so that's not a huge amount of power. It doesn't take a huge amount of charge time. But again, most of the time, this is charging itself. Did you ever imagine you'd be watching somebody drive a supercar slowly in all electric mode? This is where we are. This is what the step we've reached. Luckily, it is wicked fast and very fun. 